Why it is taking the screen all the time? Estimate. Oh, window. Can you see the presentation now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, begin uh, the class. So in the last two class, uh, basically I have discussed about uh, Maxwell's equation, which you have already learned in your previous courses, and uh, uh, the pre and the prediction of uh, electromagnetic wave that comes from Maxwell's equation. So we have discussed about the propagation of electromagnetic waves in vacuum and in linear medium and then we are, we are discussing about uh, the propagation of electromagnetic wave across uh, two different linear medium and in the last class we have uh, discussed about the special case of uh, normal incidence where uh, the electromagnetic wave and incident wave basically uh, the propagation wave vector um, that, um, that that is incident on the interface of two medium that is perpendicular to the interface but uh, that may not be the case uh, all the time so, so you would like to discuss the most general scenario today uh, and uh, so let me just uh, again show you the boundary condition that we have learned in our previous classes so these are nothing but maxwell's equations at the interface of the two medium so we know when there are no free charge and no free current and it's a in both medium are homogeneous linear medium then uh, we can relate the parallel and perpendicular component of uh, electric field and magnetic field uh, at the boundary this way where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are the relative permittivity of the two medium and mu 1 and mu 2 are magnetic permeability so we are going to again use the same set of boundary condition only difference is that now we have to uh, i mean separately consider each of the uh, component that is the parallel component and the perpendicular component because earlier we had only um, only uh, one type of component the other one was missing because it was perpendicular to that interface so let us now look at this picture okay this is a general picture where uh, let me just explain the picture first so this line is uh, the z axis and uh, this uh, is the x axis and the positive y axis is actually pointing towards you that is coming out of the screen and uh, so you can understand this uh, these are the two medium on the two side of this uh, this uh, this uh, surface and this surface which is the interface is basically xy surface so xy uh, plane is basically the interface between the two medium so first medium lies on the left side of the surface second medium lies on the right hand side of the surface now uh, let us uh, imagine uh, an incident electromagnetic wave which can actually come from any uh, direction but for the sake of simplicity in this uh, picture i have taken this direction to be uh, along this ki which is lying on the plane of the screen 
but uh, remember this this is not a necessity the electromagnetic wave can in principle come from any direction and also remember that this is a plane okay this is a plane we are seeing only the intersection so this is a xy plane which is the interface and an electromagnetic wave is incident from this side so ki is the uh, wave vector of the incident electromagnetic wave and now we know that uh, electric uh, field and magnetic field they are transfers to the uh, wave vector so naturally uh, this is the electric field which is perpendicular to wave vector and b is pointing towards plus uh, y axis right so which is uh, perpendicular to this uh, screen that we are seeing here and uh, let us uh, take this angle of incidence to be theta i right so ki is the wave vector uh, incident uh, wave vector ei is the incident electric field bi is the incident magnetic field and theta i is the angle of incidence now uh, uh, so uh, what will happen of course uh, there are two possibility one part uh, may get uh, reflected another part may get transmitted uh, but we have to apply the boundary conditions carefully because uh, now uh, this the direction is arbitrary right so uh, let us look at the boundary conditions and uh, uh, decipher each of the components that is parallel and perpendicular components of electric and magnetic field and then combine them together on the because in the left hand side of this surface we have two different electromagnetic wave one is incident another is reflected whereas on the right hand side we have only a transmitted wave so there is only one electric field and one magnetic field on the whereas in this side we have two electric field and two magnetic field we have to combine the parallel and perpendicular component of them on the uh, both side according to the and then equate them according to the boundary conditions so let us first uh, look at uh, the, uh, the uh, solution that uh, we have uh, the plane wave solutions that is again we have the same uh, equation wave equation which we have discussed in uh, previous classes that is the maxwell's uh, equation tell us that the uh, electromagnetic wave uh, can propagate in vacuum and uh, in linear medium of course with a different speed in vacuum it is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second whereas in medium it will depend on the permittivity and permeability of the medium and that wave equation in, in any linear medium or in vacuum we have a, a solution and that solution it can be written as this is a plane wave solution where this is the incident electric field or is any location vector and t is time so e0 i is again complex amplitude remember i told you that this is a complex vector which why this is complex because this incorporates the uh, the phase part if the were i delta term inside it and uh, since see i have not written any x cap y cap or z cap here why because e0 i is a complex vector which has three components in general e0 x x cap plus e0 i uh, i mean y i cap e0 z z cap and then it is the power i delta so this is a complex vector and since uh, we are discussing about a gener general scenario in the previous class when we, when we discussed about the normal incidence then the wave was propagating along the z direction so it was e to the power i k z minus omega t right if you remember that and uh, the electric field was uh, polarized in the x direction so we wrote x cap in the previous class wait a minute someone is trying to join okay mm -hmm. So, uh, in this case, since the electric field is uh, can be oriented along any direction which we are not sure about, so this is a general vector which can have all three components, x component, y component and z component. And we know that the magnetic field, once we know the electric field of the incoming electromagnetic wave, we can derive the magnetic field of the incident wave easily by taking the cross product of the unit uh, wave vector of the incident wave. Uh, and cross product of this and the incident electric field and v1 is the velocity of the electromagnetic wave in that particular medium so this is the electric field and magnetic field of the incoming electromagnetic wave which you have shown here so e and b right now see the, the one part is reflected so reflected wave obviously it is going in the same medium so velocity will be same uh, but the direction of the reflected uh, wave vector will be different and also er and br we have to figure it out because er you see ei this er is this one and br because e b and k are uh, related by cross products they are transverse to each other so if i write er to be like this because uh, this is again kr is the uh, uh, wave vector of the reflected wave right 
and remember i told you in the previous class that frequency is not going to change so frequency remains same because it is the uh, it is the because frequency is same velocity is different right so why velocity is different well, wavelength is different right so you, you multiply the wavelength time frequency you get the velocity so omega is same for the incident and reflected wave and uh, similarly in, in, in the same fashion i am not going to repeat the same thing again so, yeah, once you write down the electric field of the reflected wave you can write down the magnetic field of it which is again kr cap cross er so kr cap is the uh, direction of the uh, reflected wave vector it's a unit vector and then similarly we can write down again the electric field and magnetic field of the transmitted wave here you should remember that you see uh, uh, this is this is propagating in the second medium so velocity will be different and that's why i have written a v2 here 1 over v2 and remember all three is this complex amplitude e0 i e0 r tilde and e0 t tilde all of them are complex vector that means all of them have x component can have can have x component y component and z component which are not written here explicitly so they are hidden inside them right so that's why i'm not writing here x cap y cap z cap anything here so these are the three uh, waves incident waves reflected wave and transmitted wave so once we uh, get and uh, get the expression for electric field and magnetic field for all three components now we can we can proceed to find out uh, what are the parallel and perpendicular component of this electric field and magnetic field at the interface you know remember that the boundary conditions are applied at the uh, boundary at the interface of the two medium right so uh, let us uh, discuss another uh, okay one other fact i forgot to uh, i mean remind you which i have already told you that frequency remains same so if the frequency of all three waves is same then you already know what is the relationship between frequency and wave vector right basically you divide the frequency by the velocity of the wave you get the wave vector so since frequency is same so ki is the wave vector of the incident wave v1 is the velocity so the product of that so omega equal to k1 i uh, sorry ki v1 uh, equal to kr v1 is equal to kt uh, kt v2 so once you get this expression uh, we can have a few important conclusion about uh, the situation here uh, that we are discussing you see uh, see this uh, ki and so v1 are same right so v1 so if i take this first two term look at this ki v1 equal to kr v1 so since v1 uh, and velocity is same for the incident and reflected wave so simply i, I can we can say that ki see this is amplitude right ki equal to kr i am not talking about the direction right because they are vector ki is along this direction kr is along this direction so uh, this is the relationship between ki and kr and uh, again we can relate this with this one incident and transmitted and then you can write ki by kt equal to v2 by v1 right so ki equal to kr equal to v2 by v1 which comes from the, this equation v2 by v1 into kt and we know the refractive index and the velocity are inversely proportional so v2 by v1 equal to n1 by n2 and k into kt okay so what does it tell us now you see uh, we are going to apply the boundary condition at the interface and remember all of the electric field and magnetic field they contain an exponential terms with them if you look at them the expression you see e to the power i ki dot r minus omega t dot product of these two and minus omega t now if you compare the situ situation with the previous uh, case that is the normal incidence there we uh, assume that the wave is propagating along the z direction so that that's why it was e to the power i k z minus omega t and we made our life simple by assuming the interface to be at the z equal to zero position so that that helped us because we put z equal to zero simply in the previous class so the first term became automatically zero because z equal to zero and uh, we have this e to the power i omega t hanging on both sides which you can uh, drop simply but now the life is a bit complicated because you see this is not simply z right because this is an arbitrary wave vector and uh, that's why it can have all three components uh, ei so ki when you take a ki dot uh, r you can have a ki x dot, into x ki y into y and ky z uh into z plus and k y x x plus k y y and k y z z 
So then uh, how do I uh, apply the boundary condition? Because earlier, if I just put Z equal to zero at the interface, uh, uh, our life is very simple. Because this, imagine this, this surface to be at Z equal to zero, you just put Z equal to zero in those exponential expression and you get rid of the exponential terms. But that is not possible now. So we have to be a bit careful here. Now you see, uh, Maxwell's equations are something universal. I mean, that is not going to change uh, for anything, right? So we have we have set of boundary conditions which are coming itself uh, from the Maxwell's equations, and these boundary conditions should hold at each and every point on the interface of the two medium. And at all times, it's not like it, it holds for some time and it doesn't hold for another time. So, what are the what is the interface? The interface is the xy plane. You see, imagine a plane, this plane, this plane. If I imagine many points on this plane, each of those points will have two coordinates x and y, and z equal to zero. Again, imagine this plane to be at z equal to zero. So, all the points on this interface can be represented by three numbers x, y, and zero. Right, and the boundary condition must hold at all those points and at all times. That is uh, that is basically a uh, requirement from Maxwell's equations because Maxwell's equations are fundamental equations which describes the behavior of uh, electromagnetic uh, phenomena in nature. So we cannot, uh, uh, I mean, assume that it holds some time, it doesn't hold some time. That is not possible. It's a universal law. And then, uh, so you see, so how do we satisfy the boundary condition then? Because it is the power. In, if we take this equation to the power i k i dot r. Now, where are we going to apply the boundary condition? That you have to remember. On the boundary only, not anywhere else, only on the boundary. Now, on the boundary, what is z? z equal to 0. So, we will have only two components. So, k i x x plus k i y y because z is 0, so that will not be there. And the same thing applies for all three waves. So, I am not repeating the same thing. So, if I uh, if I claim uh, that the boundary conditions are satisfied at the boundary, that is the Maxwell equation must hold at the boundary, not only on first medium and second medium, it must hold also at the boundary, then we must have to have ki dot r equal to kr dot r equal to kt dot r, that is these three terms. This must have to be equal at each and every location on the surface and at, at all times right it may, so if you think we are trying to equate these three terms and we are not bothering about, about the second term so suppose at some point at some time it got satisfied then what would happen for another time for another time t changes so if you if, if you have to fine tune the uh, this condition once again then it will be problematic so the condition tells you boundary condition requires you to uh, accept that these must have to be the case at the boundary that is at all points on the interface of the two medium and this is called phase matching condition a very simple thing but of, of course it has several consequences once you assume this that this three has to be equal at the boundary it okay so let us just discuss uh, the phase matching condition a bit simply uh, in a bit simplified manner so imagine an uh, equation like this okay a to the power i a x uh, plus b to the power i b x equal to c to the power i c x, uh, where a uh, b c capital A b c and small a b c these are non-zero numbers, uh, and uh, we have to see what are the requirement on the these values a b c and capital A b c. Right? You see, this if I uh, tell you the what if, if the x equal to zero, then of course capital A plus capital B equal to capital C. But what about other values of x? Because see, here x is not the same x as you are discussing in the previous slide. That is x on the interface. This is a general variable. So I am just talking about a general condition where we want to understand the phase matching condition. Right? So x is any arbitrary variable here. It is not the boundary of the interface. So uh, <coughs> then. Uh, can you prove that a equal to b equal to c it is straightforward a equal to b equal to c and a plus b equal to c this can be proven easily if you take a derivative on the both side you can easily show that uh, this is the this is the case i a into this I, and you differentiate it once again you will get minus a square into capital a to the power i x and blah blah in the same way right and a minus uh, gets cancelled from both sides so you see this so this is given to you so this will hold only if this is telling you this will hold only if it equal to b equal to c 
that means these these p factors uh, on uh, before this x on the exponential term must have to be equal and that is what we are claiming here actually k i dot r k r dot r k t dot r which are uh, sitting here in the exponential terms and you see this is a necessity this is this is a necessity in order to uh, save the maxwell equation Okay. Anyway, we are not saving Maxwell's equation. Maxwell's equations are there. I mean, you just have to uh, you have to just you have to just accept that those those are some set of equations which cannot be violated. Okay, that, that is something universal. Fine. Okay. So, uh, so once you accept that, what this boundary condition? I mean, once you accept that, uh, what this boundary condition tell us? Okay. So this was the phase matching condition at the boundary. K i dot r, K r dot r, and K t dot uh, r. They are equal at each and every point x y zero on the interface at all time. Well, so as I told you that since on the boundary there are no z coord z uh, values, z is zero at each and every point on the interface. So we can simplify these three terms like this. Okay, straight power, this dot product without any z component. So that is zero. Third component is zero. Now, uh, this uh, obviously requires us to uh, accept that the x component of the wave vector of the incident uh, wave has to be equal to the uh, x component of the reflected uh, wave vector of the reflected wave, and that is going to be equal to the uh, uh, the the wave vector uh, x component of the wave vector of the transmitted wave. A similar thing for the y component. Now. If we apply a simple trick, it's not a trick really. Uh, let me just explain. Yeah, so here, as I told you, that the incident wave can actually come from any direction, right? Uh, so this is just a simplified uh, picture which I have drawn because I cannot go to three dimension. It's a two-dimensional screen where I must have to draw all these components. So I have chosen to do that. So you see, as I told you, that that this k can come from any direction. Okay. Uh, then. Uh, Suppose it, it is coming from any direction, but I have the freedom to reorient my x, y, z axis in such a way that k i lies on the x, z plane. This is possible, right? If I if I rotate my axis, that because see physical phenomena or laws of physics should not change on the basis of a, your preference of the coordinate system, right? That is that everything will always hold. So what I am saying that this is the same interface. Let it be there, and the electromagnetic wave is coming from some arbitrary direction. Okay, let it come, and then uh, if, if if it is coming from an outer direction, we can choose just a different set of axes where this k i is again oriented along the on the x z plane. And if you accept that, that then you can see simply you can say from this, uh, this we have already shown from this, and then we are assuming that x component of the incident. Uh, wave vector lies on the x z plane so then there are no y component of it do you agree if okay may, maybe i should go slowly okay uh, let me just show the picture once again k is on the x z plane right so if it, that is the case there are no component of uh, y component of k do you agree yes or no Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So K K I. Okay. So K I has no Y component, right? This is what we are. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm taking a scenario or situation where K I has no Y component, right? Yeah. So that that can be the case here. Yeah. Now, since we are applying our boundary condition only on the interface, you see, we have already seen J equal to zero on the interface, right? There are only X and Y, and When this wave vector is impinging on this surface, it has only it has only x component, no y component, right? It has z component, but that is of no use because k z uh, k z dot uh, k z into z equal to zero, right? Because z equal to zero, so k i k i has x component and z component. Z component is of no use. We have only so we are left with only x component and y component is not there because we have assumed k i is on the x z plane. So this tells us. Uh, one minute, some. Ah, uh, okay. So then, then uh, what is this? Okay. So if that is the case, then all y component must be zero on the x z plane. Since uh, k, I'm sorry, on on the x y plane, because k i is lying on the x z plane. So what what does it tell us? You tell me. That is telling us that 
if k i x if k i has no y component if k i has no y component then k i y equal to 0 but if i put a 0 here that forces this and this to be 0 also remember this if i put k i y equal to 0 that is no y component for the incident wave vector then automatically automatically the reflected and transmitted wave vector i mean the y component of reflected and transmitted wave, wave vector becomes zero and that, that if you remember this is one of the law of reflection that you have learned in your school textbook right uh, that is the incident wave and the reflected wave and the normal uh, to the uh, interface must lie on the same plane do you remember that so this implies that uh, kr kt are forced to lie on the plane occupied by ki so they must lie on the same plane right so the wave uh, incident wave may come from a different direction maybe not on the same plane which we are discussing right now but whichever plane you choose all these three wave vector must lie on the same plane and this is not uh, our choice this is a requirement from maxwell's equation right this is a requirement from maxwell's equation maxwell's equation forces us that once you choose your ki to be on the xz plane kr and kt must also lie on the same xz plane there's no other way right and this is one of the law of uh, reflection that you have learned in your uh, school textbook okay then let us uh, come to this you see uh, we have this ki into where do we get this from ki uh, sin theta i kr sin theta t you see if we have this component so there are no y component this is zero now what is the x component of uh, incident wave vector let us look, go back to the picture let us go back to the picture here okay ah this is ki right so what is sir, the x component sir. yes yes sir i have a question sir, can, I can i ask you one, one thing sure uh, so in a slide you have shown that uh, yeah. on the face matching condition i'm talking about the face matching condition that is uh, k1 right. uh, vector dot right. uh, ki vector dot r equals right. to k r uh, vector dot r uh, the face matching right. condition but somehow does it signifies that the direction of incident and reflected will uh, will be same but in the figure uh, we see that uh, the direction of incident and reflected will be not same uh, wait, wait. So, okay. So, so my so, question so, is: Does this uh, somehow signifies the direction will be same for incident and reflected wave? No, 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 no. I am not talking about direction here. Look, look at this first of all. If you look at these, uh, these, these, these are these are the amplitudes which are when when I equate the frequency in the three medium, right? Yes. They are the frequency. And when I am equating the different components of electric field and magnetic field across the boundary, I told you that exponential effect factor on both side we must get rid of this so we are not forcefully getting rid of it what yes, i am trying to what i am trying to explain to you you see this ki is a different vector right and what is r r is an arbitrary arbitrary vector it can have three components x y and z and where are we, are we going to apply the boundary condition on the interface where we do not have any z component only x and y component right yes on the interface on the interface each and every point have only values of x and y there are no values of z z equal to zero Right now, okay. if you take a dot, if you take a dot product of ki and r, naturally this is a vector which three components. So ki x is there, ki y is there. But if you combine ki x and ki y, you can you see ki has also two component, ki r x and ki r y. Right? Yes. If you look at this picture. Look at this picture. Right? This is ki. So this two component. Right? One is the yes. one is the uh, um, x component. Another is the uh, this component. Uh, which one? Uh, y component sorry um, uh, yes y component the component is not there so naturally if you if you take this ki to be a vector then it has, it has two component on this plane here imagine this point this is a point right on the interface so ki yes, has sir. two components in principle ki has all three components but as i told you since z equal to zero so ki z component is not contributing at the interface it is here okay. okay if you if you take this point it has all three components right if you take this point it has all three components k i k r has all three components but here yes, it has also z component is also there but when we are taking k i dot r then since r has no z component that part is vanishing third part so i have only x and y so k i dot r 
and kr dot r it doesn't tell you telling you that ki and kr both of them has to have the same direction because we are applying this condition at the interface right it's a point okay, here okay right? okay sir understood okay 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 okay, okay. okay. Uh, so uh, what uh, uh, what we are what are we discussing then uh, okay so as i told you that they must lie on the same plane and then i was talking about the x component because this x component of incident reflected and transmitted away they must have to be equal so what are the x component if you look at this picture uh sorry i have to go to the go back to the slide again and again because there is no other way so x component what is the x component look at this this is theta so this will be the cos theta that's all sin theta here also you can see this is the theta is the angle of refraction theta t is the angle of transmission so if you take uh, ki to be this then ki sin theta i if you take kr to be this then the x component is kr sin theta r if you take kt to be this then the x component is kt sin theta t so that is what i have written here if you look at this expression here that is what i have written right this one now we have already seen that ki must be equal to kr again i am telling you that ki and kr the direction wise they are not same right amplitude here we are talking about the amplitude right because the see velocity is same frequency is same so ki has to be same there is no other way so if ki and kr is same then the, this this first equality is telling you that theta i must have to be equal to theta r and that is nothing but the law of, of reflection that we have learned earlier in uh, in your schools right uh, so theta i equal to theta r is the law of reflection enforced by maxwell's equation right similarly if you take the second equality kr sin theta r equal to kt sin oh, sorry or the, or, or the first first equate if the first equate the first one and say the th third one ki sin theta i equal to kt sin theta t so then i i, I can write ki by kt equal to sin theta t by sin theta i right and uh, sin theta t and sin theta i if you go back to previous slide uh where do we get that sin theta t and sin theta yeah here right uh, you see ki by kt what is ki by kt n1 by n2 if you remember ki by kt equal to n1 by n2 so i can write this to be ki by kt equal to sin theta t by sin theta i and we already know ki by kt equal to n1 by n2 so we equate this to n1 by sin theta t by sin theta i equal to n1 by n2 and this is nothing but snell's law of refraction so you see although we have learned the law of reflection and re law of refraction in uh, optics or maybe or you have learned it in your school uh, but they are nothing but basically they are nothing but the maxwell equation uh, they, they are the manifestations of maxwell equation so whenever you see some reflection and refraction uh, remember that it is the maxwell equation which is waving at you so it, they, they, they are nothing but maxwell equation but we, we learn it from uh, some other uh, angle because you have not learned maxwell equation in school right uh, so we are a maxwell equation that you should remember always point so law of reflection and law of refraction were obtained from boundary condition only nothing else let us now move uh, to matching the boundary condition because you have already uh, est established uh, the boundary condition and we also uh, know what are the wave vector incident wave vector reflected wave vector and transmitted wave vector and what are the electric field so here you actually have to apply a little bit of uh, imagination because you have to visualize uh, the picture of the different components so let me just go back to the, pre pre the that uh, slide where we have this picture of all three components so the first boundary condition was permittivity to the first medium time the perpendicular component of the incoming electric field at the boundary must have to be equal to the permittivity to the second medium time the perpendicular component of the electric field uh, uh, of the in the second medium now you remember in the in the first medium we have two wave incident and reflected and the other side you have only one wave so that's why i have written it here e0 i perpendicular tilde e to the power i factor as i told you we have got rid of because the, of that condition phase matching condition ki dot r equal to kr dot r equal to kt dot t r so, so we have uh, for that um, condition we can get rid of the exponential factors and uh, on the right hand side we have only transmitted with that's why i have written only e0 e0, e0, uh, e0 uh, t perpendicular tilde right the complex amplitude 
now we have to figure out what are the perpendicular component of the incident reflected and transmitted wave so here you have to actually visualize the thing bit clearly okay let us go back to the picture so just remember this equation we are trying to figure out what are the perpendicular component of electric field of the incident reflected and transmitted wave at the boundary that is our goal so let us go back to the picture ah okay look, look at the picture carefully so this is incident electric field hmm. and uh, this angle is theta i angle of incidence so what we are want to figure out the perpendicular component perpendicular to what perpendicular to the interface so this is xy surface is the interface so we want to calculate the perpendicular component of ei at the interface right now you see so perpendicular means this, this direction okay this direction so so let us fix one direction of course you can take this to be perpendicular that that to be perpendicular that will be confusing sometimes you have to put a plus and minus on that side so we are taking this to be perpendicular this is the perpendicular direction along the plus z axis okay uh, you can uh, i mean of course you can if you uh, if you are ready to put a plus minus sign then in, uh, of course you can take this side that side to be um, the case i mean both, both sides are acceptable so we are taking this to be perpendicular plus z axis is the perpendicular direction so ei perpendicular component of uh, incident ei along z axis let us extend this vector okay I, I cannot draw it here you just imagine extend this like this can you see the cursor i hope can you see see the cursor on the image yes, sir. okay okay so if I, okay yeah any question okay so if i extend ei you see it will intersect this z z z line at some point so this angle is a theta i this is 90 degree obviously this angle this angle will be 90 degree uh, minus theta i so what will be the angle between e and uh, plus z axis 90 degree plus theta i 90 degree plus theta i so if it is 90 degree plus theta i and if we want to take the component which is perpendicular to uh, this interface so then that will be e, e 0 i cos of pi by 2 plus theta i and cos pi by 2 plus theta i is nothing but minus of sine theta i that is the case that is the first term that we have written here you just look at this uh, uh, you see we have written minus e 0 i sine theta i this is basically cos of pi by 2 plus theta i that's why minus sign is there any question okay uh, similarly if i go back to the picture and look at the reflected wave you can similarly identify the perpendicular component you see this is reflected wave right going towards this direction and we want to uh, find out the uh, perpendicular component you see this is uh, again if you sorry th th this is this is the electric field of the re reflected wave extend this right if i extend this this way this is 90 degree this is 90 degree right this is this is 90 degree minus theta r this is theta r so this is 90 degree minus theta r so this is 90 degree this is 90 degree minus theta r so what will be this angle 90 degree 90 degree minus theta r so total sum of three angles is 180 degree right so that will be theta r right 90 degree minus theta r 90 degree so that will be theta r and if this is theta r the opposite angle if if, if we extend this e r and this x line they will intersect somewhere so this angle is theta r, theta r the opposite angle will be also theta r so what is the perpendicular component then if i uh, if i want to figure out or maybe uh, i am talking about the parallel component here maybe we have to extend this on the, the, that side okay maybe i am talk, talking in the wrong, wrong direction because that will uh, lead, lead us to the parallel component let us extend this 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 way if i extend this this way then uh, this is theta r and uh, this is 90 degree and uh, 90 degree uh, uh this is this is theta r right and this is 90 degree so what will be this angle 180 minus 90 minus so 90 degree minus theta r right 90 degree minus theta r so if i extend this er this vector on the back side extend this this and then this will cut somewhere uh here and this angle will be 90 degree minus theta r so if i take the perpendicular component this will be er e0 r cos of theta uh, cos of pi by 2 minus theta r that will be plus sin theta r you see if, if it is not clear to you please stop me at any point and uh, ask if you have any doubts right so the second component the perpendicular component uh, here here i am writing e0 r this was cos of 
pi by 2 minus theta r. So, first component, first quadrant, this is positive here and uh, sin um, cos will become sin. So, that's why sin theta r. And similarly, if we go to the right hand side, the transmitted component, again, you can see the picture. It would be better if, 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 if I had uh, some option to draw the, these things, because, but unfortunately, this is not possible here. See, et, again, we extend this in the back side, you see, this is theta t and this is 90 degree. So, this will be uh, 90 degree minus theta t. So, the, this is 90 degree minus theta t, but we want the compound along this direction. So, that will be 90 degree plus theta t. If I extend this like this, this is theta so, t, so this angle. So, so. Yeah, yeah, sure, I am getting you. So, what, what, is, what, is, what is the direction of PS? Uh, what is the direction of? ER. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. BR. Oh, BI. This is BI. Okay, in this picture it will be clear. So, BI is along uh, uh, plus Y axis. BR, if you take, you see, you already know the relationship between K, E and B, right? So, if K is along this direction and E is along this direction, B must have to be along minus Y axis. In this picture it may not be clear. So, these are three dimensional figure, right? This, this B is pointing towards you, BR is pointing away from you. Right, so it is pointing away from you, minus y axis. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So here, uh, so I told you, uh, okay, we are discussing about this transmitted component. So if, this, if you extend this, this will be theta t, this will be uh, pi by 2, 90 degree. So this will be pi by 2 minus theta t. So the opposite side is be pi by 2 plus theta t. So if I take uh, the, the perpendicular component of uh, ET on this surface, then E t will, will be E 0 t, E 0 t cos of pi by 2 plus theta t and cos pi by 2 plus theta t is minus sin theta t. That is what we have written here. Uh, let me just a minute. Ah, this one. Yeah. You see minus sign is there. For, for, the, for the incident and for the transmitted, there will be minus sign because that is uh, sign of uh, cos of pi by 2 plus theta i and cos of pi by 2 plus uh, theta t. Uh, that's why this is sign uh, with a negative sign. Here it is since pi by 2 minus uh, theta r, so that's why it is a plus sign. So this is the first boundary condition that we, are, we have matched at the boundary. Now let us uh, go uh, to the second, uh, second boundary condition. Uh, this is straightforward. You see, as uh, someone just asked me that uh, what are the direction of the B, right? So, let us again go back to the picture, so, right? Uh, now, in second boundary condition request us to match the perpendicular component on both sides of magnetic field. Now, you tell me from this picture, what are the perpendicular component of B? Is there any perpendicular component? If B is pointing towards, B i is pointing towards plus y axis and B r is pointing towards minus y axis and bt is pointing towards plus y axis that is bi and bti is pointing towards you and br is pointing away from you and we are trying to find find out the perpendicular component of these magnetic fields at the interface now what is the interface that is the xy surface now if i go to the xy surface do bi br and bt have any perpendicular co component on this surface there are no, no particular component because they are tangent, tangent to the surface. If bi, br and bt all points towards either plus y axis or minus y axis, they must be tangential to this interface which is xy plane. So, there are no perpendicular component of B at the interface. That's why the second boundary condition becomes redundant. You see, look at this. So, I just have put 0 equal to 0 which is of no use because there are no perpendicular component of B on either side. Uh, now, we have to equa equate the parallel component of uh, electric field on uh, the first medium and the second medium. So, now we have to figure out what are the parallel component. This time, if you go back to the picture once again, and you see we are interested in the parallel component, that is the combined tangential to the surface. You see, ER is this. So, this time, let us extend this in this direction. So, as I told you this one 90 degree, and this is 90 degree minus theta R. So, 90 degree minus theta r plus 90, 180 degree minus theta r, so that must be theta, theta r. So, the opposite angle will be theta r. And we are right now interested in calculating the parallel component of electric field, right? Reflective, here reflected. So, that will be E r, E 0 r cos of theta r. Similarly, here also you can, you see, if you extend this in the back side, extend this back side, 
right, this is theta i. So this angle will be 90 degree minus theta i. This will be 90 degree. Extend this. This will be 90 degree. So this must be theta i, right? This must be theta i. 90 degree plus 90 degree minus theta i plus theta i will be 180 degree. So this must have to be theta i. So e i cos theta i will be the parallel component at the interface. That is the tangential component at the interface. So e i e 0 i cos theta i is the tangential component at the parallel component. Similarly, you can again, I mean, the same exercise repeating again and again, you just have to remember the angles and the relations between them. Similarly, you can again extend ET uh, in the forward side, it will cut it somewhere. You see, this is theta t, this will be 90 degree minus theta t, this is 90 degree. So the, uh, the, so the angle where it will cut the x axis will be theta t, opposite angle will be theta t, and then the, the, the tangential component of ET will be E0 t cos theta t. So I'm just putting those three parallel component at this boundary condition. Let us uh, look at this. Ah, this you see, E0 i tilde cos theta i plus E0 r tilde cos theta r equal to E0 t tilde cos theta t. So this is the third boundary condition. Then we are only left with another boundary condition that is the parallel component of magnetic field on both sides. We have to equate them. And if you remember, that was b parallel 1 by mu 1 equal to b parallel 2 by mu 2. And remember, magnetic field is only has only tangential components. There are no perpendicular component. It's all parallel, right? It's all parallel because uh, they are living on the uh, this plane. I mean, uh, this uh, x uh, x y plane at the interface. So, uh, what are the parallel component? If you look at this, as I told you in the picture, they have only either plus axis. They are only uh, lying on the along the plus y axis or minus y axis. Incident magnetic field points toward y axis, reflected points towards minus y axis, and transmitted magnetic field points towards y axis. And what, what are the relationship between EI and BI? If you remember, they are nothing but KI crap uh, cross EI and KR cap cross ER and KT cap, uh, cap cross ET. And uh, because of that cross product, there will be negative sign here. BI and BR cannot have the same direction. If it is pointing toward plus y, it must have to point along minus y. So ki cap cross ei and kr cap cross er must point towards opposite direction. Medium velocity is same v1 and v1 in the reflected uh, in an incident case and transmitted case it is in the second medium, so velocity will be v2. So uh, so if when I equate the parallel component of magnetic field on uh, both sides, we have b parallel uh, one by mu one which is basically E0 i by V1, as I showed you in the previous slide. And there is a minus sign. Why? Because the reflected component, is, um, the magnetic the mag magnetic field of the reflected wave is pointing towards minus y axis, not plus y axis. That's why this minus sign is there. They are moving in the same medium. So V1, both should, equate, should have V1. They are in the same medium. That's why this one by mu one will be there for both of them. And on the other side, since the it's moving in a different medium with different permeability, so that's why you have one by mu two uh, and e zero t by v two. That is the magnetic field. Basically, this this entire term is magnetic field, the component of magnetic field of the transmitted wave. So now we have these four equations which we have to combine together to arrive at. These are called Fresnel's equation. Although these are not the final form, we we'll combine them together to get the final forms of Fresnel's equation, which are very important in order to understand uh, different uh, physical phenomena like uh, reflection, refraction, uh, polarization uh, of electromagnetic wave uh, at the interface of two me different medium. So these are very uh, important equation, Fresnel equation. So we come, we'll, we'll, we'll combine these uh, four equations. These equations have no use. Now, if you look at this first equation and the fourth equation, you will find a similarity. Uh, they are actually same equation, right? Okay, let us see. You see, if I take minus to be uh, outside, then minus minus gets cancelled. This will become minus, right? And theta i equal to theta r, right? So this is the sign. You can take sine theta i common, right? And if you send this sine theta i on the right hand side, that will become sine theta t by sine theta i. Right, minus sign will not be there. That is already getting can, uh, uh, cancelled. So you have epsilon two by epsilon one sine theta t by sine theta i, right? Epsilon two by epsilon one sine theta t by sine theta i, uh, and on this side e zero i minus e zero r. If you look at this equation, you have similar situation. E zero i minus e zero r. You take v one common. So this will be mu one v one by mu two v two into e0 t tilde you see mu1 v1 by mu2 v2 
and epsilon 2 sin theta t divided by epsilon 1 sin theta i are same. Why? Because sin theta t by sin theta i, if you remember when we discussed the sin theta t by sin theta i, you see sin theta t by sin theta i, what is that? Sin theta t by sin theta i nothing but n1 by n2, right? And because n and v are inversely proportional, so n1 uh, by n2 equal to v2 by v1, so they are exactly same equation in a different form. Okay, let me, yeah. This fourth equation and the first equation are representing the same equation, right? And this one is of course different. So we have two different equations, you see, e0 i plus e0 r, the third one, e0 i plus e0 r, since theta i equal to theta r, according to the law of reflection, I take cos theta i common from the left hand side and divide cos theta t on the right hand side. So e0 i plus e0 r tilde of course equal to e0 t tilde cos theta t by cos theta i. And now we are calling this cos theta t by cos theta i as alpha. Let me some variable, okay. So this alpha is cos theta t by cos theta i. And the first and fourth equation can be written in the same form that is e0 i tilde minus e0 r tilde equal to beta e0 t tilde. And what is beta? As I told you before that this is nothing but mu1 v1 by mu2 v2 or epsilon2 sin theta t divided by epsilon 1 sin theta i again sin theta um, that is the sin theta t by sin theta i equal to n2 by n1 so this uh, sorry n1 by n2 so that becomes mu1 v1 by mu2 v2 and vn in our inverse proportional so you can write mu1 n2 by mu2 n1 equal to epsilon 2 n1 by epsilon n2 so these two equations they are very easy equation because you have just a plus x plus y equal to something because our goal is to find out the transmitted and reflected electric field in terms of the incident electric field because what we know is the incident one we are not sure about what should be the reflected component or transmitted component that is our goal so if you solve these two equations you can simply write down the reflected component of the electric field and the transmitted component of the electric field in this uh, way so alpha and beta has already been discussed about so alpha is this number cos theta t by cos theta and beta is mu 1 v 1 by mu 2 v 2 so you, we have now related the reflected and transmitted component of the electric field with the incident one now what are the uh, what are the conclusions uh, okay uh, things were quite similar if you dis uh, remember the previous uh, discussion uh, in the previous class because in that case we were discussing about the uh, normal incidence and you remember in that case we obtained e0 r tilde equal to 1 minus beta by 1 plus beta into e0 i and uh, in case of transmitted uh, we got e0 t equal to 2 by 1 plus beta into e0 i here only in place of 1 we are getting alpha so let us understand the significance of it uh, here, if you look at this the two equation, you see alpha is greater, if we have alpha greater than beta, then this equation tells us straight away that reflected wave will be always in phase with the incident wave, right? Well, if the opposite is the case, that is alpha is less than beta, of course, you can see that there is a minus sign over there on the right hand side. So, the, there will be a 180 degree a uh, phase shift change of phase uh, when alpha is less than beta natural i mean you just look at this equation that is telling us and of course here since there are no negative signs so uh, e0t and e0i will be always in phase so transmitted wave and the incident electric field they will be always in phase okay and there is no case of any phase change well so what are the other things that uh, can be uh, learned from Fennel's equation these are the Fennel equation that we have arrived at and now let us look at uh, this expression of alpha which is very important because alpha we have denoted to be cos theta t by cos theta cosine of the transmission angle of transmission divided by cosine of the angle of incidence and this is simply trigonometrically you can write uh, cos equal to square root of 1 minus the sine square sine square theta t of course and since sine theta t and sine theta i are related by ratio of n1 of n by n1 by n2 so this is 1 minus uh, sine square theta t where sine theta t is n1 by n2 sine theta i which comes from snell's law so you take square of this then uh, this is the expression for a simplified expression of alpha what is the goal we are trying to write down alpha in terms of the angle of incidence only so you know angle of incidence okay of course that angle of incidence must have to be equal to the angle of reflection but right now we are discussing alpha in terms of only one angle that is the angle of incidence right now look at this uh, if theta i equal to zero 
theta i equal to zero. What does that mean? Imply if you go back to the picture, theta i equal to zero. What is theta i equal to zero? Let us look at the picture once again. Theta i equal to zero. Of course, you can imagine theta i equal to zero. That means I will take this uh, vector along this line, right? The angle is increasing in the direction, right? So if theta here will be ninety degree, here will be zero. Right. So if theta equal to zero, that is the case of normal incidence. If you remember, theta equal to zero was the case of normal incidence. There is no angle. Ah, uh, it was not oblique incidence. Normal incidence. So theta equal to theta i equal to zero. So if theta i equal to zero, then this expression of alpha tells us that uh, alpha. What will be the value of alpha? If theta equal to zero, uh, theta i equal to zero, then alpha will be one. And straight forward to check that if you put alpha equal to one in this equation, two equation, you get back the final equation uh, for the normal incidence which you have discussed in the previous class. And if you go to the special case of the, okay, this is this we have I have already told you verbally. And then if you have theta i equal to ninety degree, ninety degree means again I am uh, going back to the picture in order to think clearly. Uh, Theta i equal to 90 degree. That means this incident wave vector is tangential to the surface. That means it is it is tangential to the surface. The light is coming this way. This is the interface. It is coming this way. So theta i equal to 90 degree. Then what will happen if theta i equal to 90 degree? Then it's a special case. If you look at this carefully, you will see that alpha diverges. Right. Alpha diverges. What does it imply? If theta is equal to 90 degree, alpha diverges. That means if alpha diverges, you see e zero r. If alpha diverges and e zero t, if you look at them, then what will be the situation? You see, this will be one. I mean, in the limit of uh, in limiting value, e zero r. See, the alpha is diverges. E zero t will be zero because this is a very large number. Infinity tends to infinity, so the e zero t will be zero. There will be no transmitted uh, component of the electric field. The entire electric field will be reflected at uh, theta equal to 90 degree. And I don't know whether you have uh, learned it before, but the uh, classic example uh, is is given. And uh, if you if you drive a car uh, on a wet uh, road, you will see that it becomes very difficult okay. to drive the car because the, the, yes, well. I can listen to you. Ninety degree hole to, I mean, reflection has chi. I mean, so the nature of it is that. I mean, so the, I mean, along the interface to judge. Right. तार माने इसलिए सिर्फ बोला होता है ये फ्रेंडली क्वेश्चन बोल चाहिए जो जो दी तुम्हें थीटा आई टा 90 डिग्री काटो ताहले रिफ्लेक्टेड माने इसलिए तुम्हें जो छोटी डब भाप चेस्टा कर चुके जो एक अने जो ये टेंजेंट सियाल जाए ताले तो कोई नहीं जाते चले तो फिजिकली तुम्हें हवा चेस्टा कर चु it is not less simplified thing. But it, 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 तुम जितना बोल चुके हो, I understand your point. What we are trying to say is that ये तो जो भी ए दिखे जाए, तो जो ए दिखे ही जाते हैं। But the point is that only last that alpha will diverge, then the light which is trying to go towards this direction will maximally reflect it. तो हमने बेसिक बातें reflect कर जाएँ। ये तो जो बोल चुके हो, समझे? तुम जितने तक आज से जितने तक आज पे, right? And तुम जो तुम जो बोलो कि भाई फिर आज पे Let me just uh, come come to the end, right? Because I am not discussing the microscopic picture here. This is a classical wave picture where I am just discussing about a wave. And because whenever we are talking about a wave and matter, the interaction between matter and wave, right? We have to take into account that as well, right? So this is a simplified picture which I am presenting to you. That wave is going this direction when it is theta equal to 90 degree. The wave which is going towards this because as soon as it is touching the surface, it will maximally deflect it. That is what I am trying to say. So we do empty space. At a way we do it. Or we repeat. Go to the last bit. Last bit, ma. But this is not a empty space. This is the interface up to medium. It is said. Then we can say that if the interface is high, then the medium is more calm. And the only thing is that at a 90 degree, you have to leave it because it is too dark. Or the maximum is the last bit. It is maximum. You can say. I am saying that. Right? This is not a common sense. Right? Common sense. It is not just that. It is empty space. It is cut. It is empty space. It is cut. It is empty space. It is cut. 
ट्रांसमिटलीस and uh, if this is the alpha of course the expression for alpha which you have uh, already obtained and now you see there are two special cases that we have discussed theta i equal to 0 theta i equal to 90 degree but in between there will be an angle an angle intermediate angle theta equal to theta b for which alpha can be equal to beta so this is the value of alpha right so what is that angle we are, we, try, we are trying to figure it out if see, see if alpha equal to beta then you can clearly see that there will be no reflected component right alpha equal to beta means there will be no reflected component right this is another special case right and we want to figure out uh, what is the value of that special angle theta equal to theta b for which alpha will be equal to beta that is for which for for, for, for that case eor tilde will be zero Right, that is the reflected wave will be completely extinguished. So uh, let us take this equation for alpha, and I am squaring on both sides, right? So uh, and uh, see uh, this, what is alpha because uh, this is the condition imposed. Alpha equal to beta. Alpha equal to beta. Only alpha square can be taken into consideration. Alpha equal to beta. That's why I am. writing to take a look and theta i is a theta zoom that theta i equal to theta b that is the special angle for which alpha will be equal to beta so i am writing here 1 minus n1 by n2 sin theta b whole square divided by cos square theta b because you have squared this term cos square theta b equal to alpha square which is equal to beta square right so this is the this is the special uh, coming from the expression of alpha now you see uh, i want to figure out what is sin square theta b So cos square theta b will be one minus sine square theta b, and if you simplify this this equation, that will be sine square theta b equal to one minus beta square divided by n one by n two whole square beta square y n one n one n two. This this is already there n one by n two. So I have taken sine square theta b one minus uh, sine square theta b sine square by theta b common on the left hand side. So sine square theta b will be one minus beta square divided by n one by n two square minus beta square. Now n one by n two. If you look at the value of beta, what is the beta? What is beta? Okay, maybe you have forgotten that beta is this. Uh, beta is this, right? And if it is non-magnetic medium, so mu one will be equal to mu two, right? So beta will be in n two by n one. Beta equal to n two by n one. And we have here, here we have n one by n two. This is one by beta. This is one by beta. So one minus beta square divided by one by beta to the power four because one by beta square whole square is one by beta to the power four minus beta square. If you simplify it, you will get this one sine square theta b. And cos square theta b similarly once you get sine square theta b, cos square theta b equal one minus sine square theta b. That will be one by one plus beta square. Now we will get another important formula. Okay, that is if I want to calculate tan of theta b, this special angle theta b that will be sine theta b divided by cos theta b, which is equal to one plus beta square. One plus beta square gets can cancelled, and this is square root of that because square here sine theta b cos theta b that will be equal to beta, and beta is nothing but Approximately equal to n2 by n1 because mu1 equal to mu1 equal to mu2. So beta and this is the ratio of reflective index to two medium is equal to tan of theta b. And I don't know whether you have learned it already in your optics course or not. You must have learned probably because polarization starts with this uh, thing, right? Brewster's law by reflection, right? So uh, so this Brewster's law uh, in case of polarization in the plane of incidence this is remember in the plane of incidence what is the plane of incidence the plane of incidence contains the incident ray vector and the normal to the incidence uh, to the uh, plane of uh, to the interface 
So in the plane of incidence, what is telling us that there will be a special angle theta b for which there will be no reflected component. The reflected angle component will be completely extinguished. This is called Brewster's law, right? So Pellin's law equation predict that light with electric field polarized in the plane of incidence. Remember, we have drawn a picture where electric field is polarized in the xz plane. In the picture that I am not going back to the same picture again. The electric field is polarized in the in the xz plane. So it is it is a case of a, a plane of plane of incidence. We are discussing the whole phenomena on the plane of incidence. In that case, if you choose a special angle theta b, which is called Brewster's angle. Then there will be no reflected component. Reflected component will be completely extinguished. But remember, this is a polarized wave because I have fixed the electric field on a particular plane. But what will happen then for the unpolarized wave? See, if you remember, unpolarized any unpolarized signal, electromagnetic wave can be written in terms of two orthogonally polarized light with arbitrary phase. If you combine two orthogonally polarized light with arbitrary phase, you can produce unpolarized light. So naturally, if for a polarized light, the reflected component is completely extinguished, what will happen for an unpolarized light? Because unpolarized light is nothing but a combination of two orthogonally polarized light. That means if I take a, un, an unpolarized light and shine that light on the interface of two medium, say a glass and uh, water, or glass and air, with a particular angle theta b, which of course depends on the ratio of the reflected index of the two medium, then what will happen? It will you will see that there will be a reflected component, but it is completely polarized. Why there is a reflected component? Because one orthogonal component is completely extinguished, while the other one is left unchanged. That's why if you have unpolarized light at the interface of two medium incident at a Brewster angle, then you will see that the reflected component of the light is completely polarized. Right? In the first case, a polarized light, we have no reflected component. In case of unpolarized light, we have a reflected component which is completely, uh, uh, perfectly polarized. Anyway, completely or perfectly polarized. This is this is Brewster's law. Uh, I am not sure whether you have already learned it. If not, please go back to your uh, uh, I mean, optics book and figure it out. So uh, we are explaining all the phenomena in terms of uh, in terms of. Maxwell's equation. That is the difference here. Because in, in optics, you have not talked about Maxwell's equation. You just have uh, some waves, sinusoidal wave. You took, you took that. You discussed about interference, diffraction, polarization, all that in terms of just uh, plain uh, waves, right? And they are nothing but solution of the Maxwell's equation. Okay, so I am stopping here because uh, there are other things to discuss and which I hope I will not be able to complete within five minutes. So let us stop here. Uh, we will discuss those things in the next class. Any question? Okay, if you, if you have no question, if you have question, then please ask. Otherwise, okay, because you have another class at 1.45, so we have to leave now. Okay, then see you tomorrow. Thank you.